Today's scripture reading, Revelation chapter 3, verse 3 uh, to 4, another angel came and stood at the altar, holding a golden censer, and much incense was given to him so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar, which was before the throne. All the smoke of incense went up before God out of the angels and hand. Pastor Park y o n g will give us a sermon titled The Incense of the Heart. Dear brothers and sisters, as we open an era of new beginnings, we will more like Jesus and lead us global ministry aimed at glo- global evangelism, world evangelism, and missions with the gospel of holiness and God's power. Also, we will move to a new century and construct a Canaan and Grand Century. We believe that many come into spirit and whole spirit to carry out God-given duties by completing the providence of the end time. Today, I'd like to share a message titled, The Incense of the Heart. To make a single bottle of a rose scent, 4,000 rose flowers are needed. And to make a one bottle of acacia honey, hundreds of thousands of acacia flowers blooming in a small garden are also needed. In order for our, our prayers, To become the incense of a golden censer before God, should we build up our deeds full of goodness and love? Dear brothers and sisters, when David's son Solomon became king, he and all his people came before the Lord and offered a thousand burnt offerings. That night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, Ask what you wish me to give you. Solomon asked, For you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people for it. who can rule these great people of yours. So, so God gave him not only wisdom and knowledge, but also wealth and honor that he didn't ask for. There is no, there's no one like Solomon before or after him. Likewise, When you worship God in spirit and in truth, He is pleasing, He is pleased with you. For those who offer sacrifice wholeheartedly like Solomon, God grants even the desires of their hearts and gives them so much blessing. Rome 12 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brother, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies. as a living and a holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Dear congregation, on a New Year's Day, as you present your bodies as a living and a holy sacrifice that pleases God, are you offering spiritual service to God? Are you offering your service that are not acceptable to God, which is a fleshly worship? I want all of you to reflect your worship. The dictionary meaning of a worship is a ritual to show respect and worship God. In a spiritual sense, through the ritual of giving respect, praise, and glory to God, believers give thanks to God and exalt Him. Why should humans worship God? God created all things in the world, gave them to humans, and sent His only Son, only beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to save them 
who had fallen into sin. Yet God doesn't accept all worship from them. In the Bible, we can see that there is some worship that God doesn't accept. There is spiritual worship that is acceptable to God, and there is fleshly worship that is not acceptable to God. In Genesis 4-3, in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. Abel brought fat portion from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with uh, favor on Abel and his offerings. But on Cain and his offerings, he didn't look with a favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. After Adam and Eve were driven out of the Garden of Eden, Garden of Eden and started to settle on this earth, God taught them how to receive forgiveness of sins and communicate with Him. The ritual was to sacrifice a lamb as a ransom, drain out its blood and burn it. But over time, an instant occur- occurred that changed the ritual offered to God. Cain clearly knew knew the meaning of the spiritual sacrifice through his parents, but he didn't make a sacrifice in a way that pleased God based on his own thoughts. While Abel offered a sacrifice as he learned from his parents, he made a sacrifice with fat portions from some of the first burn of his flock. Here, fat portion refers to the stores and energy of energy for animal to live, which is life. What Abel offered fat portions means that he made a sacrifice to God with all all of his heart and mind. Abel kept in mind the importance of offering a sacrifice to God and acted on his faith with a perfect deeds. Even though Cain and Abel were the brothers, their hearts were so different. Cain didn't have a good heart compared to Abel, so he easily became stained by the flesh and used fleshly thoughts. In the end, he disobeyed God. As a result, the Bible says the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offerings, but on Cain and his offering, he didn't look with favor. Even then, Cain should have realized his mistake. Yet, Genesis 4-5 says, Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Cain felt disappointed that God only accepted his brother's sacrifice, and instead of uh, suppressing his emotions, he became resentful. He was also envious and jealous of Abel. This aspect of Cain can be a good example of characteristics of fleshly people. Fleshly people use their own fleshly thoughts to disobey. As a result, when disadvantages come to them, they complain or grumble rather than reflect on their wrongdoings. I know that among us there is no one like Cain who goes against God's will and disobeyed him. But as much as we have the fleshly flesh in our hearts, fleshly thoughts come to mind even if we don't want them. As Rome 8-7 says, because the mind set on the flesh is the hustle toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. Also, people who have their own righteousness often go against God's will without even knowing it. When Cain offered the fruits of the soil, he probably chose what he thought was best. He may think, if I offer the best sacrifice, God would be happy to accept it. From his perspective, he thought was uh, very right and reasonable. 
But it was uh, his righteousness. It was not in line with God's will. Regarding this, Exodus 15.26 tells us, If you will give earned heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His sight, Hebrews 11.4 says, By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. God testified about his gift, and through his faith, through his death, he still speaks. Since God looks at the heart of a human, he was pleased with Abel's sacrifice, which he offered with all his heart, with faith, by obeying God's will. Today, I'd like to look at two ways in which our worship, prayer, praise, offerings, confession, and everything we do can become the pleasing aroma of our hearts before God. First, we should offer our unwavering faith as pure gold. Revelation chapter 8, 3-4 says, Let's read together. Another angel came and stood at the altar, holding a golden censer, and much incense was given to him, so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. Amen. Revelation 5, 8 tells us, when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which was saw uh, which are the prayers of the saints. Here, the golden balls full of incense is the prayers of the saints. And the smoke of incense going up with the prayers refer to the heart of the saint, saints who pray. When believers pray to God, angels receive their prayers. These prayers are delivered to a high-ranking an angel through several steps. These prayers go up before the throne of God by the archangel. In this way, if the prayers of the saints are accepted by God as incense and feel the amount of prayer, their prayers are answered. The incense that Father God receives is not only prayer, but in a broader sense, the praise we offer and our confession are included in it. Praise is a prayer with a melody. So when we praise with our hearts, it, became, it becomes incense like prayers, thanksgiving, joy, and faithful confession offered from the depths of our hearts become beautiful aroma to be acceptable before God. So Psalm 19.14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my Redeemer, therefore, not only our prayer, but we must make our words and meditation beautifully so that they become incense before God the Father. So you need to cast out your sins and should become more like the Jesus to see other people's weaknesses as goodness. In today's scripture, the balls full of prayers received by angels were not just a censer but a golden censer. The gold altar 
which was before the throne, many things in this world rot and deteriorate, but pure gold doesn't change. The glory and authority of Father God is unfailing forevermore because those are offered up to God. They are specifically given to the golden censer and golden altar. Also, if a censer or altar is made of gold, it means it holds something precious. When serving guests, more importantly, The more important the guest is, the more precious plates are brought out to be used. Also, the more precious and worthy plates are, the valuable, good food we choose to put it in. Likewise, in order for the incense of our prayer to be contained in a golden censer, it must be acceptable to our God. In my house, there are plated coffee cups that hadn't been used in 20 years. My wife brought them as a wedding gift. Then one day, she told me that she just kept them because she didn't know there was a precious person at home. So she said that she would use them to serve that person with a golden coffee cup rather than a paper cup. I will leave it to your imagination to figure out who that person is. Dear brothers and sisters, So, there is a precious person close to us. And I want all of you, including me, to reflect just waiting for a precious person. And many said, if uh, Jesus comes to me and uh, I want to, I can serve in Jesus. With a, like Mary Magdalene. But just look around those, look around those, look around people, those you, those around you, what kind of person next to you? There are persons who are heavenly prince and princess close to you. So Jesus told us, if you do, you do little things to your, your uh, goodness and goodness to your person, and you can do like uh, the Jesus. The golden sensor functions like a machine that measures the incense of a prayer. For example, if you go to a rice mill, there is a machine that picks out the stones when you pour rice mixed with the stones. Prayer, praise, and worship worthy before God are contained in a golden censer, but prayer, praise, and worship that are not acceptable are not included in it. Then what kind of prayer is worthy before God? What sort of a prayer is acceptable before God? What kind of worship is worthy before God? When you pray with all of our, all of our hearts and mind, in the utmost fear of God. We can say that our prayer is offered wholeheartedly and that we worship in spirit, in spirit and worship in truth. You must pray, praise, and worship with unwavering faith as pure gold. As you obey God's word, you must offer up our prayer, praise, and worship. In the trace of scripture, the prayers of the saints are expressed, and the word saints means a holy group. It refers to the holy children of God who lived by, he lived by God's words and followed His will. There are those who uh, make little effort to resemble God as His children, no matter how long they attend the church. People like them are church goers who just come in, come and go to church. So it's difficult for them 
to become the incense that Father God can accept. Also, the prayers that can be contained in a golden censer are prayers offered in love, which refers to spiritual love, not fleshly love. It must be a prayer offered from the heart of loving God and loving the soul. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. If you have a spiritual love and faith, you will pray more earnestly for spiritual things than for fleshly things. Rather than seeking uh, things for your family, food, and health, you ask prayers for our souls, God's kingdom, and His righteousness. After seeking first of spiritual things, you seek your fleshly things. While there are those who pray a lot for themselves, but do not pray much for the kingdom of God. Of course, if you are a young believer, you don't know what to pray for God's kingdom. As your faith grows, you learn more about God's word and can pray more. You may say that you have a mature faith. If you don't pray much for the kingdom of God and long for it, can your prayers become strong incense before God the Father? If you pray reputation, and when you pray, it cannot be incense before God. If you so, as you speak in tongues or praise, all kinds of thoughts go in and out of your mind. Then how can your prayer be strong incense to be contained in a golden censer? No matter how much a person gives to God, if he doesn't eat from the depths of his heart, it doesn't become strong fragrance. What God receives is the aroma of our hearts. Keep that in mind. Even if each person prays with all their hearts, the size of censor varies from person to person. The prayers of a person with great faith can be strong scent, even if they pray shortly. While for a person who has a lot of flesh in his heart, the scent of his prayer is not the strong. So even if two people prayed for the same amount of time, the size of the censor that angels receive their prayers is different. Also, the amount of prayers that need to be filled varies depending on the topic of a prayer. When you want to get answers to a small problem, if you feel a small censor, your answers come. Yet, when receiving when receiving answers for something big and, big and important, you need to feel a large censor to get answers. If you pray was worthy to be contained in a golden censor, the incense of your prayer never disappears. In vain, Father God surely remembers your prayer and gives you answers and blessings in His timing. In verse 3, it says, Much incense was given to him so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints. What does that mean? This means that the prayers of the saints are settled at the end of human cultivation. When human cultivation is completed, all the prayers offered up to the point will be settled. Not only our prayers, but also the praise and confession we've offered and everything that has become the aroma of our heart, heart is settled. 
The 21-day prayer that Daniel prayed for, the melody of the harp that David played, the good confession that Stephen offered when he was martyred, and the praise that Apostle Paul offered in prison were all presented to God as a beautiful incense. When he cast our sins to the point of shedding our blood, so, So all the Daniel prayer meetings we offered, and how many prayers and pray. praises have you offered as our loving confessions toward God with the gratitude and how much incense have we offered to Him during the long years of human cultivation. Everything we saw and do for goodness with faith and love while living on earth is ultimately offered up before God as the incense of our hearts. On the final judgment, all our incense offered to Father God while we've been cultivating on this earth, will be summed up and settled. The word, the word given is different from person to person, so spiritual actions and faithfulness are required. So, and the Lord will give us someone a golden crown or a righteous crown and glory, glorious and crown. Also, there, is a, there could be a person who doesn't have a... He wasn't given any crown by the Lord. The actions you build up habitually on the outside will not be rewarded later in heaven. Also, every hour of prayer and confession offered up to Father God is recorded and retained. The details of receiving answers and giving glory to God are all recorded. All of these things also serve as uh, evidence of judgment on the last day. Not only our actions on this earth, but even our words will never disappear in vain. These things could be evidence of your reward or pun punishment at the judgment. So keep that in mind that we should always give a confession of faith with goodness and love. So I pray in the name of the Lord that the incense of your prayer stored up will be given to you as a beautiful reverse in heaven. Dear Mammin, in order for our worship prayers, praise offerings, confessions, and actions to become rich, aroma, and go up before God, we must offer offerings without blemish, An offering without defect means that the heart of a person giving offerings and his offerings must be without blemish. As Malachi 1a says, let's read it together, but when you present the blind for a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you present the lame and sick, is it not evil? Why not offer it to your governor? Would he be pleased with you? Or would he receive you kindly, says the Lord of hosts? Amen. God rebukes the Israel, Israel people. Even in this world, when giving a gift to a noble person, you don't give something that is damaged or has flaws. 
You select the best ones and package them with care. How much more precious should we give to Jehovah God Almighty? If you are stingy about giving your offerings to God or give offerings under compulsion, how can God the Father accept it with joy? Also, if you have any barriers between God and you, or are not consigned to your brother in Christ, your offerings cannot please God. So, when you give your offerings to God, you must give it to Him with joy. If you have sins or faults, you must repent of them, tear down the barriers of sin, resolve any issues you have with your, brother, your brothers in Christ, and then give it your offerings to be accepted by God. Not only your heart, but also the offerings you offer must be without blemish. So our shepherd always uh, lived an example in life. So he explained, when giving an offering, we strive to offer clean, new money rather than crumpled, turn, or solid money. Just like when giving tithes, various offerings shouldn't be given roughly from what is left after spending. When income is earned, you should first set aside our offerings and give them to God. All sacrifice offered before God must be offered with the incense of our hearts that can be contained in a golden censer. 1 Samuel 16.7 says, For God sees not as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Father God wants to receive not only our actions, but also the fragrance of our hearts. Usually, people only look at appearances. So, if someone who gossips about you behind your back compliments or flatters you in front of you, you can be fooled. But God is not deceived at all. In Matthew 23, Jesus severely rebuked the hypocritical scribes and Pharisees. In 1 Corinthians 13, he also said that if we give all our possessions to the poor, do good deeds without love, it profits him nothing. Even though you are a worker, if you attend a prayer meeting out of a sense of duty, your answers in change will be slow. Also, since you love God and souls, you long for your God-given duties and want to be elected for God's work. But if you want to be recognized by people and your spiritual growth in faith will be stagnant. If your actions are different when someone sees you or not, this also becomes a lie before God. If you act, act like you're holy at church, but you speak harsh, harsh words and behave in ways that are offensive at home, this is not perfect. Proverbs 16, 2 says, All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. When we recognize our God who watches over us and want to offer the aroma of our hearts that can be contained in a golden censer, we diligently sanctified our hearts. Our Father God is more pleased with the praise we offer with a pure heart, even though our voices is not that good to sing praise. So, if you love Father God and our Lord, you strive against sin to the point of shedding blood and cherish each day 
pressing on toward to achieve a sanctified heart before God. I heard a testimony from a person. So his friends uh, decided to get divorced. And my members and told him uh, his uh, story. But he was uh, very sad, so he, was, he decided to, to be split from his wife. But his wife started to go to m a m m i n but then she changed slowly. And now, his wife uh, became like an angel. So, his family was so happy and harmonious. So, our members, his uh, story to his uh, friends, so his friends and his wife and encouraged them, and my members encouraged them to attend our church, m a m i n So, he shared the gospel with his friend. So, with the gospel of holiness, our members become more like the Jesus and be light, salt and light in the world. So, our members' families became harmonious and became happy, so giving glory to God. So, you heard that kind of a testimony from our members, right? So I was so grateful for our members t e s p i t e his uh, stories. Dear congregation, let me conclude the message. So I heard that our members' families became happy after they attending our church. So... Cain and Abel did, did their best to offer their sacrifice, but God didn't accept Cain's sacrifice. We took a closer look at how we should offer our worship, prayers, praise, confession, and actions so that all of them can become rich fragrance and go up before God. Cain made a sacrifice to God as he pleased, but when his sacrifice was not accepted by God, he had evil feelings. God knew Cain's heart, had him know his wrongdoings, and made a request for him to control his sinful desires. Even today, Father God tells His children to worship in spirit and truth in the same way through the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. God tells us, offer offerings without blemish, follow the truth, Don't hate your brothers in Christ. Don't be deceived. Do good. Cast out every form of evil and love one another. He always dwells in our hearts and speaks to us. John 16.13 says, But when, we, when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own, on his own initiative, initiative, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will disclose to you what is to come. Father God didn't leave His children like all friends living in this world, stained with a sin. God sent to comfort it, the Holy Spirit into the hearts of His children to help their weaknesses. When we stray from the truth and fall, the Holy Spirit grieves and pleads with the Father God. While when we walk in the truth, the Holy Spirit rejoices, bringing joy and happiness to our hearts. 
Throughout the history of human cultivation, God the Father has always cared for human beings and nurtured them in love. I hope that all of you feel the love of God deeply and enter into spirit and whole spirit more quickly so that all the worship, praise, and prayers we offer before the Holy Father will feel golden censer without pleasing aroma of our hearts. Moreover, I pray in the name of the Lord that our confession and actions of faith become a strong incense and come up before God so that He can give you answers and bless you. Think over the message and pray together. 